everyone and welcome to this video. So before we get started, if you like this video tutorial, hit the like button. If you want to comment, please do. If you want to share among friends, family, colleagues, anybody really, then please feel free to share and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the future tech videos coming your way. Welcome to this video tutorial on OSPF LSA types. Now there are seven main OSPF LSA types and those are the ones we're actually going to be looking at in this lesson. However, it is important to note that there are more LSA types, but they're quite unique and we're going to deal with those unique LSAs in a different tutorial later on. So what are the seven LSA types that we're going to look at? Well, we've got type one, which is a router LSA. We've got type two, which is a network LSA. We've got type three, which is a summary LSA. We've got type four, which is an ASBR summary LSA. And the ASBR is an acronym for Autonomous System Border Router. We've got type five, which is an Autonomous System Border Router ASBR external LSA. We've got type six, which is a multicast designed LSA for group membership. And we've got type seven, which is a not so stubby area. So it's called an NSSA external LSA. We're actually going to explain what each of these LSA types are used for in this tutorial with examples. So let's get on with the presentation. So let's have a look at the type one router LSA. So type one router LSAs are sent by every router within an area. And we're going to see that in a minute. And they identify the router and the links that the router is attached to. So what type of information do the type one router LSA packets carry? Well, let's have a look. They carry the IP networks, the subnet masks, and the costs for any other router to access their link. So these LSAs will be used by the other routers to build a topology map of the OSPF area. So let's have a quick look at that. So in the diagram below, as we see here, we have area zero. This is just one area and we have two routers, router one and router two. So router one would send this type one LSA to router two, okay, as we see. And likewise, router two would send this type one LSA to router one. So it's important to remember though, again, as we've already mentioned, that this type one LSA will only be flooded within this area. And in this case, the area is area zero. Now we're gonna move on with type two LSA. Let's go ahead and have a look at OSPF type two, which is the network LSA. So type two network LSAs are sent by the DRs, so the designated routers, but only if there are multiple OSPF routers on the same multi-access link, which is a segment. Now we discussed this in the previous video of OSPF, how it works. So it's used to describe all routers connected to its segment directly. Type two network LSA packets are flooded between neighbors in the same area of origin and remain within that area. So this is exactly the same as type one packets. So if we had area zero and area one, any type twos or type ones that are originated in area zero cannot cross to area one and any that originate in area one cannot cross to area zero. So they remain within their area. It is important to remember that although the DR is sending the type two LSA and it notes the network that will be sent to its neighbors, the neighbors will still send out a single type one LSA. That won't actually change. As a final add-on uh, for this section for the type two and from a high level perspective, 
having a DR BDR ele election increases convergence time. And so on a point to point link, there's no desire to have type two LSAs. And there never will be anyway, because there will never be a DR BDR election. We saw that again in the previous OSPF, how it works video tutorial. So we're going to have a quick look at uh, a topology now of how this actually functions. So in this topology, we have area zero, we have router one, router two, and the DR. We also have a switch in the middle. So this shows that it's on the same broadcast segment. The DR sends out the type two to its neighbors. As so. Once that is completed, that is the type two LSA sent. So it will only send the one the same as the type one route that come from the normal routers will also only send out one LSA. Now we're going to move on to type three LSAs. We're now going to take a look at type three summary LSAs. So type three summary LSAs are sent into a border area by area border routers or ABRs. Uh, the type three summary LSA actually summarizes the area topology and not the IP prefixes. So as you can see, this can be somewhat confusing when you see the word summary for the type three LSA. So we're not summarizing prefixes, we're summarizing topologies of areas. Before we go to the diagram, we'll see if I can clear up what I'm on about with the above statement. So type one and type two LSAs give detailed descriptions of everything within an area. So let's say area zero, for an example, but area one doesn't need to know about everything in area zero, like the routers. It just needs to know what networks exist there and that is what this summarization in the type three indicates. Now it may sound a little bit complicated, but on the next slide, we'll start to go through the process from a high level. So here we have an OSPF topology diagram with three areas. We have area one, area zero, and area two. Within each area, we have the type one and type two LSAs. ABR router two will take the type one and type two LSAs from area one, summarize them and send out type three into area zero. So it will flood area zero with type three summarized packets from area one. At this point, it's important to note that when there are type three LSAs, the ABR will also take those and summarize them. So we'll have type threes, type one and type two, the ABR router four will summarize and send and flood area two with those type threes of the three summarized types from area zero. The reverse also happens within this process. So area two would send its type one, type twos, ABR would summarize, send type three into area zero. ABR R2 will take the type one, type two and type threes, summarize and flood area one. So it's important to remember that each type three LSA contains a single IP subnet. So what we'll do is we'll use the diagram again below to explain exactly what I mean by that. So let's say, for example, that area one has 10 subnets, area zero has 20 and area two has 40. To summarize the type one and type twos, R2 ABR would actually send 10 type threes into area zero to cover the 10 subnets because each type three LSA only contains a single IP subnet. Likewise, 
because we summarize the type threes as well from area zero, root of four ABR will actually summarize and send 30 type threes to account for the type one and type twos and the type threes in area zero into area two. If we look at it from the opposite direction from area two across to area one, ABRR4 will actually advertise 40 type threes into area zero to account for the 40 type one type twos that it sees from area two. Likewise, ABRR2 will flood area one with 60 type three LSAs to account for the type one type two and type three that it summarizes from area zero. Now this actual process is a default process. Now we can look at IP summarization as we expect to see IP summarization, which is prefix summarization. So for example, let's say the 40 subnets in area two and the 20 subnets in area zero can all fall within a forward slash 16. That means on ABRR2, we could configure IP summarization so that only one type three forward slash 16 summarization is actually flooded into area one. Now, the summarization side of things, we'll go into IP summarization in a later tutorial, but that's a really good position on ABRR2 where we can utilize summarization. So that explains LSA type three. Next, we're going to move on to type four. So let's take a look at type four and type five LSAs. We know now that type one, type two and type three LSAs, well, they give us all the information we need to know about all the networks within the OSPF domain. We know that type one and type two gives us the information within their area. And these are known as intra area routes. And we know that type three LSAs will teach the area about what exists in other areas. And these are known as inter area routes. So what we're going to ask is where do type four and type five LSAs come into play? Well, they'll only exist if you have an autonomous system border router or an ASBR that's redistributing foreign networks into OSPF. This is where those type fours and type fives come into play. These types of routes are known as external routes. And they will include all the information required about IP subnets that exist outside the OSPF domain. Now, to simplify this and show how it actually works, we're going to have a look at this on our OSPF topology diagram. In our OSPF topology diagram below, we've added an ASBR root 6. We're going to have root of six redistribute the 172.16.32.0 network into area one. And it's going to do that using a, a type five LSA, which is also known as an external LSA. Now, they will contain a single IP subnet that has been redistributed into OSPF. Now, it doesn't actually matter what routing protocol it has come from, you know, as I've listed here, it could be EIGRP, RIP, static, uh, it could be any of them. It will always show up in OSPF as a type 5 LSA. The contents within the type 5 LSA is going to say something along the lines of to reach network 172.16.32.0, utilize the ASBR router 6 to get there. So the type five LSA will then be forwarded without any change at all throughout the OSPF domain. What this actually means is the exact same type five LSA will also appear in 
area 0 and area 2. You will also notice that they have to be forwarded by the ABRs since the ABRs are the link between the areas but they will be forwarded as I've mentioned unchanged. This means that in area 0 you'll see the same type 5 LSA that you see in area 1 and area 2 will see the same type 5 LSA that you see in area 0 or area 1 and this type 5 LSA is always going to say to reach the 172.16.32.0 network use router 6 but if it says use router 6 then surely we have a problem area 1 will know about router 6 because router 6 will send a type 1 LSA into area 1. So area 1 knows about router 6. But area 0 and their routers or any routers within area 0 know, do not know how to get to router 6. In fact, they don't even know about router 6 at all. And the same applies to area 2. It doesn't know how to get to router 6. Yet the type 5 LSA in area 0 is saying to get to 172.16.32.0 use router 6. And so is the type 5 in area 2. So how do we resolve this issue of area 0 and area 2 having the full unchanged type 5 LSA that tells them use router 6 to get to 172.16.32.0 but yet they don't actually know that router 6, 6 exists, yet alone how to get there. Well, this is where the type 4 LSA comes into play. So type 4 LSAs, as we know, are ASBR summary LSAs. Now, they actually include instructions on how to reach an ASBR in a foreign area. Type 4 LSAs are actually sent by the ABR whenever an ASBR exists in a foreign area. So, in our diagram, ABR router 2 is going to send a Type 4 LSA into area 0. And it will provide instructions on how to reach ASBR router 6. In effect, the Type 4 LSA is going to say, Hey, to reach router 6, over here, use this router, router 2. And of course, then area 1, or router 2, knows how to get to router 6. So now we have the same with router 4, where the ABR of router 4 is going to inject or send the type 4 LSA into area 2. And this LSA is going to say, again, hey, to reach router 6, use router 4, which in turn will send it into area 0. And this will reach router 2. And router 2 knows how to get to router 6 and therefore knows how to get to 172.16.32.0. So to sum up the Type 4s and Type 5s, Type 5s will advertise the network and inject it into OSPF. And that Type 5 LSA will remain unchanged across each area as it propagates throughout the OSPF domain. The Type 4 is the summary which states to get to the ASBR, you need to use this router to get there. So I think that's all the information without going into a deep dive that we need to know about LSA types 4 and 5. So let's have a very, very quick overview of OSPF type 6 LSA. And the reason I say very quick is because you'll soon understand the lack of an OSPF type 6 LSA. So OSPF type 6 LSA was originally considered for, multi, for the multicast purpose, multicast routing for OSPF, but it was never actually implemented or deployed. So similar to distance vecting vector multicast routing protocol, it did not last long. And today 
for IP multicast routing purposes. PIM, as I'm sure we're all aware of, is the protocol independent multicast that is used instead. However, because we're going through OSPF LSA types, I thought it was important to give you a quick heads, heads up regarding type 6 LSAs, even though type 6 LSAs are not actually utilized. Again, as per OSPF type 6 LSA, we'll do a very, very quick look at a type 7 LSA, which is the NSSA external LSA. So the OSPF type 7 LSA, NSSA, which is a not so stubby area, external LSA, is seen in not so stubby areas and totally not so stubby areas or totally, or totally stubby where there is redistribution. So normally stub areas don't allow redistribution, but as a not so stubby area, redistribution is allowed. However, it's important to note that the redistributed prefixes are not seen as type five LSAs, they're seen as type seven LSAs. Now a type seven LSA is translated to a type five LSA and then sent to area zero, which is also known as the backbone area. Now don't worry too much about the areas at the moment because we're gonna cover all of this in a different lesson. So we'll cover areas, multi-areas, in a different lesson and explain what those areas are and what they do. So what we need to know is that if there are two NSSA ABRs, so the area border routers, they actually negotiate with each other and the border route with the lowest route ID will win and do the translation. Now, there's no real need to have a look at a diagram on this as we've already covered type five LSAs and we understand the usage of them. The only thing we need to note is that type sevens do not leave the stub area. As we've stated, they're translated to type five LSAs and we know how type five LSAs work. So that actually concludes the OSPF LSA types tutorial. So hope you enjoyed the tutorial and if you liked it, please hit the like button and please make sure that you subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button. Thank you. See you. See you soon. Bye bye.